Hello everybody, this is Lucas Anderson from the University of Illinois Center for Teaching Excellence. Let's learn about Bloom's Taxonomy. So you often hear about the importance of critical thinking, or higher order thinking skills. And if you're a teacher, this is the kind of stuff you want your students to be able to do, to be able to think critically. But, but what does that mean to think critically? And, and how do you get your students to learn how to do it? Well, one of the most important tools for answering those questions is Bloom's Taxonomy. This is a moderately frightening photograph of Benjamin Bloom, a cognitive psychologist who chaired a committee of educators in 1956 and developed something called the Taxonomy of Educational Objectives, which we just call Bloom's Taxonomy. All right, strictly speaking, what I'm going to show you is just one part of a much larger work, but historically it's been the part that educators have been most interested in. It's called the, uh, the cognitive domain. And here it is, Bloom's Taxonomy a list of educational goals ordered from most to least complex, comprised of evaluation, synthesis, analysis, application, comprehension, and knowledge. So check that out. That's a great list of stuff you want your students to be able to achieve. Um, but in the 1990s, a group of cognitive psychologists revised and updated the 1956 Bloom's Taxonomy because in, no matter how great something is, it's okay to revisit it after 40 years to make sure it's still working. A new version appeared in the year 2000 and is credited to Lauren Anderson and David Crothwell. So check it out, the new hotness, Bloom's Taxonomy Revised, an updated list comprised of creating, evaluating, analyzing, applying, understanding, and remembering. Let's set these lists side by side to highlight some of the differences. Most noticeable, perhaps, is that the nouns from the original list have become verbs in the revised list to better reflect the active nature of learning. You may also notice that the second element of the original list, synthesis, has become creating and has been bumped up to the top of the revised list. Also, the knowledge category from the original taxonomy has been removed, not because we don't think knowledge is important, but because it's recognized that knowledge is sort of what the whole thing is about. Knowledge is now an entire dimension of the revised taxonomy, and it's recognized that there are four kinds of knowledge we're concerned with. Factual knowledge is sort of the basic ground-level stuff, like definition and, well, basic facts. Conceptual knowledge has to do with the relationships between the bits of factual knowledge, like how they're connected, how they, can, how they can be classified, and how stuff works. Procedural knowledge is knowledge of process or how to do something. And finally, metacognitive knowledge is sort of tricky. As the name might imply, it's knowledge about knowledge, um, like whether you can monitor your own thinking or you know how your learning process works. Here's a nifty chart outlining the knowledge dimension. It's got some definitions of the terms up there, some subtypes, and also some examples on the bottom. It's originally accessed from the URL you see at the bottom of your screen. If you go there now, you're going to see their super fancy updated version, which is worth a look. I also invite you to pause the video to have a look at this version. So what about those verbs I was so excited about? What we just talked about, the knowledge dimension, that's sort of what you know. This list right here has to do with how you know it. From basic remembering, the ability to recall basic facts, up to understanding, your ability to understand why the facts are the case, up to applying, the ability to use your knowledge to solve problems, up to analyzing, the ability to break material into its parts and understand how each part relates to the whole, up to evaluating, the ability to use your knowledge to make judgments based on good standards, and all the way up to creating, which is the ability to use all your, all your knowledge into a coherent whole and do something with it. Some people like to think of this as a very strong hierarchy, where you have to achieve the lower levels of the list before you're capable of achieving the upper levels. I don't know if that's strictly true. It may be best just to think of the bottom of the pyramid as just more lower level learning than the higher. Check this bad boy out. Here's a chart of the cognitive process dimension, those verbs we were just talking about. You can see them along at the top. Just underneath them is a brief definition of each one. Underneath that is a list of similar verbs that are trying to get at the same idea followed by questions and activities that tend to elicit this kind of learning. 
again, this is a great place to pause the video, feast your eyes, and be amazed. All right, let's practice. Uh, for each of these questions or prompts, try to figure out which level of Bloom's taxonomy we're trying to hit with these questions. Uh, you'll see the possible answers are listed for your convenience in the upper right. So go ahead, pause the recording, take a minute, write down your answers, really commit yourself, and then check back in a little bit to see if you're right. No, seriously, pause the video. Don't just wait for me to give you the answers. I know you don't like it when your students just wait to hear the answers. Let's give it a try. All right, let's see how you did. What factors affect the price of corn? That's an analysis question. Be able to identify the parts that make up the complex whole of the corn market. What is the chemical symbol for water? That's a remember question. Can you recall the basic fact of water's chemical symbol? Propose an alternative strategy for increasing profitability. This is a prompt to create, to take everything you know about the business in question and uh, do something pretty complex with that information. Draw a diagram of the digestive system. Well, this involves understanding, be able to know how the different parts of the digestive system relate to one another. Create a budget for the new bakery business. This is an application question. It's asking you to take what you know about the bakery business and solve a particular problem. I know it's a bit tricky with that word create right up there in the prompt. After listening to these two candidates, who should be the next CEO? This is an evaluation question. It's asking you to take everything you know about the subject and make a good judgment based on good criteria. Well, I hope you did well there. If you missed some, go ahead and look back at the chart and try to see where we're coming from. Uh, it may also be helpful to note that some prompts do draw on multiple levels of the taxonomy. For example, in order to draw a diagram of the digestive system, in addition to understanding, you do have to remember certain basic facts about the system. Well, there's your crash course on Bloom's taxonomy. Uh, before I let you go, I'd like to highlight three things this taxonomy is good for. First, it is excellent for creating learning objectives for your students. You can combine a verb from the cognitive dimension with a noun phrase from the knowledge dimension. Uh, for example, students will be able to design an experiment in order to test a particular fact. Or students will be able to evaluate arguments for a particular position. If you're really concerned with developing critical thinking skills, make sure you include some objectives that are high up on Bloom's taxonomy. Second, uh, Bloom's taxonomy can help you develop questions for while you're in class. You don't want to find yourself always asking low-level recall questions. Uh, include some questions that make your students analyze, that make your students apply, make them evaluate. Again, if you're concerned about critical thinking skills, you have to be asking questions in class that help develop those critical sk thinking skills. Questions high up on Bloom's taxonomy. Third and finally, and related, a Bloom's taxonomy is helpful for creating assignments, projects, and exams. If you have a care about critical thinking and your learning objectives are high up on Bloom's taxonomy, you want to make sure you're evaluating their ability to do it. So make sure your exams and your assignments are also testing um, elements that are high up on the taxonomy. Well, that's all I have for you. Again, I'm Lucas Anderson from the Center for Teaching Excellence. Uh, teach well.